My name is uh, Bunker Roy, and I uh, started what is called now the Barefoot College 41 years ago in the middle of a desert in Rajasthan. And uh, it's a college with a difference because it's a college first only for the poor and it's managed and controlled and owned by the poor. Second, it's a college which uh, promotes and identifies and uh, applies traditional knowledge and skills which are already available in villages which are thousands of years old and stood the test of time. And we want to uh, bring back all that knowledge and skill and wisdom which is lying in villages all over India and indeed the world back into mainstream and show people who are so-called experts in the development field that this is uh, worthy of universal application and it can be used anywhere in the world to be able to um, improve the quality of life of very poor people. The Barefoot College uh, is the only college which is fully solar electrified where a Hindu priest who has just barely done schooling actually fabricated and installed the, all the systems in the college. There are 60 kilowatts of panels and everything works off the sun. And with that uh, approach of uh, demystifying technology and decentralizing it right down to the people who matter the most, we extended that approach to other parts of India. So we have now solar electrified about 600 villages all over India, around the Himalayas, up from Ladakh, up to Bhutan. And the whole idea was to try and involve the community into um, taking decisions on how they would like to solar electrify their village and how much they prepared to pay for the repair and maintenance of it. And after we uh, found that this model works on the ground, we thought we'd extend it all over the world, outside India. So between 2004 and 2010 today, we have covered almost uh, the whole continent of Africa of going to these very small remote rural communities in Africa, in these 28 countries in Africa. And we have uh, solar electrified these villages, but with a difference. We've come to the conclusion that men are untrainable and we should actually train people from the village who stay there, who are rooted there, who live there, who, do not, who have no interest in going to a city. So we selected grandmothers and the grandmothers have been a very good idea because all of them who have come to India for training have gone back and solar electrified their own village. This is a unique partnership we have with the Government of India, where the Government of India has given me full freedom that if I should select any grandmother from any part of the world, they're willing to pay the airfare and the six months training costs. But I have to look for the hardware. So with that in mind, one of the hidden agendas of me coming to Australia was to find out if I could identify at least two indigenous Aboriginal women who are grandmothers, who are prepared to come to India and train them to be solar engineers. I believe you don't have any Aboriginal women who are solar engineers living in communities today in Australia. So it might be the first of its kind in Australia. Uh, we are trying to get a lot of people interested and there has been a lot of interest. Uh, and we hope that we can accelerate this process so that the grandmothers from one of these remote communities in the Torres Straits, is it? Who might uh, come for our training in March. So that is the reason, one of the reasons why I'm here.